Welcome back to the Skid Factory. Today, we're gonna to address your irrational fear of wiring. Wiring on cars is a bit of a polarizing thing. A lot of people like it, well, actually not that many people like it, and a lot of people hate it. And they, they are probably just, I think it's more of a fear thing. You, you see this bunch of wires and you freak out because you don't know what it does or how it works or anything like that. Um, so that's what we're gonna try and sort of educate people on today, as well as obviously wire the car up so it works. Uh, when I was younger, I didn't like wiring either. I, avoided it like the plague because I didn't understand it. Eventually I got interested in it, started doing it, learnt, taught myself, here we are. Um, probably the biggest thing I would say about wiring is just that every wire goes somewhere. That's all there is to it. There's nothing to it. It's just, a, it's just like a road map. You, that's a street and that goes to a house. That's all there is to it. So the best way to go about wiring as well is to have everything exposed. Don't try and figure things out. Avoid the work of opening up a wiring loom to have a look at it. It's much easier if you can physically trace a wire than to try and probe and guess what they do because that, that usually ends in, in tragedy where people get even more scared of wiring because they don't understand what's going on. So don't be lazy, open up the thing Make sure, well, obviously this is new, so it is open, but if you're fiddling around with an aftermarket, like with a, an existing loom, just cut the bloody thing open and have a look inside. That's the way you're gonna find what's wrong, if there's anything wrong, or modify it without worrying about problems happening. So, would you tell me not to be like... Well, last episode with AN fittings, you're like, we're just gonna quickly chat about AN fittings. Unfortunately, stuff like this is, it isn't easy to talk about it quickly because it is, it is a sort of a complex, subject I guess but we'll try well I'll try uh, what he's given me a little list here of, of bullet points um, ECU choice we obviously use Haltech I've used them for a long time I've used a lot of other ECUs as well and Haltech is probably the best choice for people doing what we're doing it it's advanced enough to do everything really well um, it can pretty much cover most bases, but it's also the most user-friendly interface and wiring that you'll, you will get. Um, people will talk about other ECUs, blah, 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 like people love to be snobby about ECUs. But if you were to actually have to fit and configure some of these ECUs, you would hate your life because they are not easy to work with. Haltech has always been made, or actually probably more went in the direction of making it easy for people to actually use them without being an electronics engineer. So that's probably one of the best things about them. The, the other thing that's great about them is the support. You can ring and talk to a guy and he will help you. A lot of ECU brands, you don't have that. It, you, you've got to buy it off a dealer and that guy is your support. So that doesn't happen with Haltech. They've got big offices full of smart dudes who are very patient with people that don't understand what they're doing. So heaps of pluses. Um, but again, use whatever you like. The same theories apply. You'll just have a lot easier time if you use a Haltech because they work. Um, working out what you need. Okay, this is a Delete 2500 we're using on this car. We don't have to use that. We could go right back to a 550 um, and batch fire things, which we do on a lot of cars. We just chose to, to go with the 2500 in this case because we're going to do some stuff that I haven't done before that's um, sort of new features for Haltech, which we'll talk about later. Um, pick what you need. Don't just go for the one at the top because if you don't need it, you're wasting your money and wasting time. If you, if you just want the engine to run basic stuff, you've got to a normal auto or a manual transmission that doesn't need any control, then there's there's other ECUs that will do exactly the same job. In in the case of Haltech, the control system for your 
um, fuel control and ignition control and everything, it's the same with all of them. All that you're doing is adding sort of secondary modifiers with as you go up the line, like not control and that sort of thing. Uh, so don't think that you're not getting as good of engine control because the ECU is cheaper. It's actually the same. You're just adding advanced features. And advanced features are great, but if you don't need them and don't know how to use them, then, then they're not going to help you. So keep, use your brain, do some research, not, not by asking Robbo off the internet. Call Haltech, call, talk to the sales guys, ask them what they think is the best option for you. They'll ask you the questions that I've just mentioned and they'll come up with a solution for you. Talk to your tuner. Talk to your tuner. If your tuner doesn't like blah, blah, then you either don't use that tuner or use what he recommends. That's always a thing. Um, and plug and play options also. Yeah, to make a heap of range. There's a ton of plug plug in stuff. If if you're if that suits your application, then obviously that's going to be the easiest way to do it. Um, stuff like um, like XI6 Turbo Barra stuff. If you've got a Falcon and you've run out of options on the factory ECU by flashing it, then that plug-in option is perfect. It pretty much covers everything and gives you a lot more uh, scope for when you're modifying it more heavily than the factory ECU can handle. Uh, extra stuff, flex fuel sensors, other sensors, like you don't need all of that stuff. Uh, my default now is everything will have a wide bend on it because it is the most important thing that you'll need to figure out what's going on. Um, you can go, you can go with safety sensors like pressure, fuel pressure, oil pressure, that sort of stuff. They're good uh, if you want to set up engine protection. Um, if you've got a dash, which is also another option, anything that you want to see on that dash, you're going to have to put it through the ECU. So you will need all those sensors to go with it. What else do you want to say? That's pretty much about it. Planning ahead, what you need what you're going to use yep. um, and use your brain. Did I, you say that? Yeah. I hate the term do your research because it, that's what dickheads on the internet say when they think they're right but have nothing to back it up. But have a look around, figure out what you actually need. This is if you're going to do it yourself, of course. Um, Figure out whether you are confident enough to do it yourself. If, if you're not confident, you're just going to have to get someone else to do it. Like, I, I, don't, I don't do my own brain surgery. I'm not a doctor. Like, you've got you to gotta draw the line somewhere. If, if you're confident in the way things work and you understand it, then go ahead and try it. Uh, if you're not, you just have to pay someone. And you'll find out if you do it yourself, it is very time-consuming. That's, that's the main part of it. You've got to be patient and... and um, methodical about wiring, that's how it works. So if you're not going to do it yourself, you've got to pay the other guy to do it. All right? That's using your brain. If you can't do it yourself, you've got to pay. Um, if you're going to do it yourself, tools. There's a bunch of tools here. Um, the main stuff that you would need, you can buy directly from Haltech. They have a little tool package, which is what I use. Pretty much gives you the bits you need. Um, there's heaps of really good videos on Haltech's YouTube channel that explain how to do this. Like, it's going to be much better than the way I explain it. Um, we're just going to sort of give you an overview because people aren't that patient. Um, but if you're really into it and you're really keen to research, then, then those videos are going to help you. That Dave did a... How, how long was that series? It was, oh, it was, massive. There's like, so much information in those videos. Yeah, that was like a COVID lockdown... Dave in his shed wiring up cars and and videoing it. It's really good. He goes through it really all the way through. So Plus, even a lot of Haltechs have the stuff like uh, knock sensors explained and yeah, all the, setting the up wide bands, all that stuff. There's, there's heaps of tech stuff on there. Um, so plenty of resource if you go looking and that Haltech's technical resource on YouTube is quite, it's very good. They put a lot of time into it. Um, which is another another form of support. So that's what you get when you buy a, a brand like Haltech is support. That's what, that takes away the pain if you're worried about something. 
Um, next thing, which is what we're going to do now, is positioning of everything. You've got to work out where everything's going to sit before you start wiring. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to work out where the ECU is going to sit, where the fuse box is going to sit. We've got an IO expander that we're going to use uh, for running the transmission. We're going to run a uh, fully automatic transmission in this vehicle, which is something that I've never done before. So we've got an expander for that. Uh, we've got a wideband. We've got an IC7 dash, so the relatively new dash uh, that's going to go in as well. So we've got to work out where everything sits. Then we can move on to how to get the wires to those parts. So let's get Woody under the dash and figure stuff out. Follow the roadmap to the street sign to the house. Exactly. All right, Alan's handballed me the task man at the ECU because he doesn't like rolling around in rat infested um, floors. So one thing to note, well, a few things to note when you're mounting ECU is one, make sure it's going to be uh, waterproof. Um, Elite ECUs are waterproof anyway, but if it's going to be drowning in water, obviously that's going to cause you problems. The next thing to obviously make sure is that it's out of the way of anyone's feet. Um, I've seen countless times fuse boxes or ECUs or wiring looms in the, in the footwell and they get booted on by passengers and disconnect connectors or cause you troubles. It's a pain in the ass. So mounting it up high on our plate up here is going to be up out of the way. We've got ECU fuse box and also our IO expander. So that's going to go somewhere up in the vicinity there. It's out of the way. It's weatherproof. It's close to our um, firewall isolation block here for the power. It's close to the firewall grommet for the loom to go out into the engine bay. Um, nice and simple and easy to do. So, easy job, Alan. That's the spot. Smash some tech screws through there and let's do this. Well, that's MDF, so tech screws or wood screws? Wood screws. Oh. Uh, Woody's mounted up the ECU and IO box and a dummy fuse box. Um, he purposely made it crooked just to trigger all you chuches that carry on about it's stuff not, all the time. It's not crooked. It looks crooked to me. It's level. I suppose if the car was on a slight down. Yeah, but that doesn't sit on... Uh, mounted. So we got that sorted. Uh, we know what, where things go now. Um, this thing here is your friend. Don't chuck it out with the box. You need it. So this, this is your wiring pin out. Um, obviously some things here are going to be more or less fixed so injector 1 to 6. We don't need 7 and 8. You can use them as DPOs instead. Uh, ignition 1 to 6, there's there's 7 and 8 on the other side, but again, those things are, are set. That's what you're going to use them for. Um, stuff like DPOs and AVIs, so um, digital pulsed outputs, um, uh, analog voltage inputs, they're configurable. So you've got to start writing down what you're going to use them for. Um, over here we've got drive-by wire. so these are what we use for drive-by wire. The motor controls are, are only used for motor control. Um, but these, you can see, this is their recommended for TPSs. So you've got two throttle position sensors. That's just redundancy. That's how it works. You've got two accelerator pedal position sensors. Again, that's just redundancy. It's a safety thing. So that's what we're going to use those for. Obviously, the throttle is on the outside in the engine bay but the pedal's inside so you got to go through and find those AVIs, pull them back through. It also requires a 5 volt and a sensor ground and it also requires a brake switch. Well you actually don't have to use the brake switch for this but you will. You, we do need it for the, um, the auto control. Uh, it, it's optional but I'm using what used to be the I think the TPS was the original TPS if you've got a cable throttle that's what I'm using so you can configure all those things and I've got a obviously the ignition switch it just turns the whole thing on that's going to go over the other side of the car as well to where the, the driver sits uh, rear of the car fuel pump flex fuel sensor so they're pulled back through again as well they're going to go 
along beside the battery cable to the rear of the car. That's the main power supplies to everything. That's our bulkhead junction block that's just below this grommet. I've made notes. Got to be done. Make some notes on what everything, what colour everything is, where it goes, what it's for, what branch of your of wiring it's going to be on. Uh, we've got, I haven't started anything on that um, I.O. box yet. We would have almost got away with using, with, without using it, but not quite. Um, the auto control has got a lot of inputs into the, um, the box, or into whatever you use to control it. It's only got three outputs because it's only got three solenoids inside the, in a, the, um, valve body so it's pretty it's very simple as far as how it actually makes it makes the um, trans work but the logic to w to go through to, to what it's going to switch is is not as simple so there's a lot of um, the speed inputs there's a bunch of inputs from the their park neutral switch so that kind of loads up the input side of things a bit so we, we're using the um, IO box uh, People screeching about I.O. boxes and adding on boxes and stuff. Don't go there. <laughs> Why don't you just buy a $5,000 ECU that you don't need instead? Oh, but then you do need it and also. Then you'll have heaps of wires left over. Or you could buy this ECU and then buy that if you need some extra stuff. It's really... It makes a lot of sense to me, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe I use my brain a bit more than other people. Anyway, that's how it is. The options are there. What's next? Where do we go from here? Um, you got to delete heaps of those, gonna, don't you? Yeah, I don't think we're going to need a lot of lot of the output stuff here because this is obviously designed to run a, a an eight cylinder engine or, or more. Uh, it's got stepper motors and stuff like that that we're not using because we're using drive by wire. Um, again, you can reconfigure reconfigure those to to do other things, but. This engine is not that complicated. It's really just the transmission that's that's causing the extra complication, and I just wanted to make it. So I just wanted to do it because it's a recent thing that they've added to the capabilities list. So um, we would have already had it wired up by now if it if it didn't have an auto. So Lee owes us. Although that air conditioning is pretty sweet. Uh, we'll throw it in the car. Find out a grommet spot mark that um, and then we can start because we've got those little sub looms for the ignition and the um, injectors we can just sort of go snip cut that off and just terminate that because they're all finishing in the one spot a lot of the time consumed in wiring is getting your distances especially when you say so you've got six injectors in a row and each one of them is going to be a little bit further away so you got to sort of do a lot of measuring out and trimming same with the ignition if you've got six coils and that sort of thing so that them being done already saves heaps of time and it also saves you from having to do um, one into six branch for the power supplies and that sort of thing which again is it sounds like nothing but it is time consuming so that's saving us some time um, we've got knock sensors we've got um, Trigger and home, uh, air temperature, water temperature, that sort of thing. It's all got to be measured out. Once it's all measured out, we bring it back and it just gets terminated on the bench. You just got to do all your branching with tape. So you have a taped point where you go, okay, that's where this branch is going to come off for the whatever sensor it is. The rest of it keeps going. So we'll explain as we go. We'll do the whole yeah. thing. So, back in the car. All right. We've fed it through the firewall, through the hole. I've had a, like, plugged everything in, in under, underneath there. Made sure we got the right length and everything. And then I've just whacked a zip tie around here to, to secure this. So we've got a, a reference point when we pull it back through. Um, now, we've gone through and got the length of everything. So as I said before, um, that's ignition. 
much easier when it's already terminated like that because I can just cut them all off at the one spot. All I've got to do is wire up that douche and it's done. Same with the injection. They've all just been cut off at the same point and then I just terminate the other end of that. Uh, we've got a knock sensor front and back, uh, cam sensor that goes like that. We're just running it through here. Um, we did debate whether to put it underneath but it would have pretty much would have just made it a freaking nightmare for us to, to actually get under there and, and figure out how to wire it and stuff and also someone put the firewall grommet hole in the wrong yeah, spot yeah the firewall grommet was probably if it had been over a bit further it might have been better but it is what it is uh, we've got a fuel pressure sensor there's an oil pressure sensor down there as well I'm using repurposing a, what used to be the map sensor for that we're going to just run a just a pressure line into the ECU it's got a 30 psi or 29.6 or whatever it psi internal map sensor it just saves you one one more um, AVI to just use the internal one but if Lee wants to run 31 psi he can't so we got drive by wire throttle there we're going to obviously put a um, air temperature sensor in that pipe there which will be heaps of fun to pull off I can't believe I forgot to put that in there already but you get that uh, over the other side we have crank angle sensor which comes up here on a tail we don't actually have one I can't find it so we'll get a new one uh, it sort of just bolts onto there originally so that'll just get terminated around about there we've got boost control solenoid Gonna just keep yeah, all the hoses heavy. over here and just have this one wire coming across to the boost control solenoid. It'll be bolted onto here somewhere. And just coolant temperature sensor, which is also over this side. What about fans? The fans, I will leave one there and one there. Once I know where they are, so I'll just go off, refer to other. So I know that one of them ends where the where the coolant temperature sensor is, and the other one ends where the injector loom is. So. I don't really need to refer back to that. Are they, is the wiring a part of that loom though? In there? It will be. Oh, so it's not I, I haven't added it yet, no. Yeah. No, so I can do that later because I've got reference points. I can just add that stuff in. Um, so yeah, we just gotta chop that off and chop this off, then we can pull it all back out again. We'll do that throttle pedal as well, like get the in, internal loom sorted. Uh, then it all comes back out again and then it just all gets terminated on the bench um, and probably wrapped up and just added back to the car if we're sure that we know what we're doing. So I'm sure that you don't know what you're doing but... Well, I'm, I'm learning myself. Relatively confident. Woody just pointed out that we've also got the wideband controller. Um, this can go in or outside the vehicle. Uh, you can't modify the wiring on it because it's all calibrated to um, like lengths and stuff. That's just how it works. Cut that just <laughs> I used to chop them down on the older, the early version ones that had the um, 4.2 sensors, but these ones you can't. It's it, it's electronically calibrated for that wire length, so um, that can go inside the car, and that's a good idea anyway because this is actually a um, a cam junction, so I can run a, a can cable over from the ECU, plug it into that, and then run it out of that into the dash, and the, it'll be just part of the, the circuit. Um, you can mount them in the engine bay though, they are again. Yeah, they go, they go wherever you, you can put it wherever you want, it doesn't matter. Um, normally they are, I do normally put them in the engine bay, but um, it's not very practical in this case. We got it up on the bench now, and I'm terminating the connectors. Um, you can see I have got tape points along here. That's that's my junction points for where the these particular wires will leave the loom to go off to their designated connector. Um, I've got a bunch of stuff here that probably won't be used, but I'm not going to chop it up yet. I, it's only because we're doing auto control, I'm not, I may need to use some of the outputs out of the ECU for the auto so I'm just going to leave them there for the moment usually I know what I've got to use and I just pull them all out if I don't need it you can de-pin them from the ECU no problem at all very easy to do on that amp connector um, 
I'm using this sort of expandable sleeving stuff on it, which is the sort of fashion of the time. Um, you don't have to use that. It's, it is pretty fiddly. You've got to heat shrink the ends of it and stuff like that. Um, this is the kind of stuff that they use on OE looms. It's just nylon sleeving. It's dirt cheap um, for like 30 metres of it or something. It's really, it, it works perfectly fine and it's much less fiddly than that. Um, it covers the wire up and stops it rubbing, so all good. Um, this is the stuff I use in the middle of the loom here where you, because you can open it up and then it'll just get um, like Tessa wrapped around these junction points to seal it all up. Sweet as. Um, connectors, did I say? No, not yet. Connectors? Uh, always use new connectors if you can. You, you can buy most stuff. It is available. You just got to know, sometimes know what it's called, but most of the time you can just buy it by application. So those came from Golby's. That's just two JZ, one JZ crank and cam sensors. Um, these came with the pressure sensors from Golby's. Um, Throttle body connector, again. Got we does with that too. Got yes, yeah, got the instructions, um, well, the wiring instructions. Most of the other stuff, just mostly you'll get connectors with a um, a sensor, unless it's fitted to, already fitted to the engine. But yeah, you can buy most stuff. You just got to go looking for it. Uh, anything else? We just generally use douche connectors, uh, Amphenol, Deutsch, China. Deutsch Amphenol Company, whatever you want to call it. Um, genuine Deutsch is best to use, but the cost is there. It's not the cheapest thing in the world, but uh, it is probably the best without going stupid with um, racing car stuff. So um, Hal Haltech uses that on anything, like all, all the cam connectors and everything like that. It's all Deutsch connectors, so it's um, it is. A, they are a good thing. They're easy to use. They're easy to swap pins around if you mess something up. Um, info, plenty of it on the internet, just got to go looking. This is Haltech's support page, has all the oh, focus issues details on, that's the crank angle sensor, right down to the, hey, just connect that to the yellow wire and you'll be sweet. Cam sensor, same thing, all these other stuff, that's the Pressure sensors, so that's on Golby's website. All good. Information is king. Uh, you're, if, you get, if you get the information wrong or you just guess, you're going to have a problem. What else do you want to know, Woody? Um, terminating, that's pretty much we're covered, yeah. You want to know how magnets work? No, that's okay. Um, crimping, uh, using the right tools, crimpers. Yep, well, we went through that earlier. Crimpers, you must use the correct tools on these sorts of terminals, otherwise they'll fall off. Um, don't blame the terminal if you don't use the right tools because it just won't work. Uh, it does a lot more than just squash bits of wire together. It's, it creates a mechanical weld um, by squishing it together. So buy them from Haltech or whoever you want. Uh, it's pretty easy to just click it on the store and then you've got what you need. Um, douche ones. Again, easy to get. Um, continue. Continue. What about a montage? Have you had a montage yet? No, there's no montage yet. Are we going to have a montage? Uh, I don't know. Do you want to have one or not? I don't know. It's, hard. it's a hard decision to make. Everything's terminated now, apart from the auto control stuff. I'm just still having a little think about that. Um, we are about to add the final. Uh, insulation, the DCI split um, version of that. Uh, we've added a couple of relays to the fuse box. For the thermo fans, there's two spare spots in these fuse boxes in this layout. Uh, if you have a single uh, connector ECU, like a 550, 750 or 950, you have like four spare ones. So. Uh, all the pins are provided so you can add what you want. Um, I've um, brought some wires through from the main power connector there into the fuse, terminated them, brought them across here into those relays, one each. They've already, they're already terminated for ignition uh, and then they go out 
two of the thermo fans right out the front there, one on either side of the engine for each fan. Yeah, that's one of them, and that's the other. And there's a uh, DPO there that's switching them. So that's good to go, we'll put the lid back on that, should be fine. We've done video on thermo fans before. We've done a video about, uh, yeah, adding, adding thermo fans where they weren't. Um, this, these aren't wide for them because not every car uses them. A lot of cars still have clutch fans, so um, check out that video if you want to sort of get a bit of an overview. In that, we weren't using an ECU, we were using a switch, uh, like a, a, I think it was a BMW switch or something. Uh, in this case, it's obviously controlled by the ECU, which is a much better idea because you can change all sorts of things. Uh, Haltech's also got videos about relays and how they work and all sorts of stuff so again good resource go through the Haltech YouTube channel lots of tech stuff in there about wiring and componentry and how things work um, there's our pedal switch pedal pedal plug I should say it's a video pedal um, that Raceworks sells for this sort of application that looks very BMW it uh, looks like a video plug to me. It's a pretty sh short throw thing. It's got a metal rod so you can mess around with the, the angle of it a bit better. Some I've seen these in plastic as well, but you can't really mess around with the plastic, the angles of the pedal. So um, that's sort of a, a little bit better idea. Ignition switch. It's basically turning the whole thing on and that's just brake switch. Um, you don't need brake switch, but it is a thing that the drive-by-wire uses as an input and does want it, but you don't have to put it in there, but I've added it because we've also got auto control, which it may have a function for that as well. That's the that's going to go to the wideband, that's CAN, so it just goes to the CAN plug there. Auto. Uh, we were going to use an I.O. box, but I actually sort of when we looked into it a bit further, um, we sort of just got that just in case, so it didn't sort of hold us up, but it's not really that thirsty on ins and outs, so I was able to use just the main ECU without the I.O. box, which is a good thing. Um, it's basically the control in this particular transmission. It's got three solenoids in the box. It's very simple. Two are switching on and off to give you the gear, the four gear functions, and the other one's the torque converter. Uh, we've got input speed to the transmission, so the front speed sensor, and the output speed, so that's the, the speed of the tail shaft. Uh, and we've got uh, the one little catch with it is the trans park neutral or gear position switch on this. It's got like 50 wires hanging out of it. It's full analog for each, each gear position and that, and um, that doesn't work with the, this arrangement. It, uh, we need to convert it over so it's just a single wire input that has voltage ranges for each gear. Um, initially that sounds like a pain in the ass but it's actually pretty easy and it's very commonly done in all sorts of things in cars these days. It just uses resistors and a 5 volt input. So instead of 12 volt we run 5 volt in and then we run a series of resistors of different values that changes the voltage on the outline well it changes the changes what this wire is going to receive the the analog input you're going to go through that with when we once we've wired it up and yeah. make it work we yeah. will yeah I've, there's a bit of work to do with that yet yeah, i don't know if we'll get to that in this episode it's uh, i've never done it before so it's going to take a little bit longer uh, otherwise we're ready to wrap her up and refit um starting the car possible i still need to do some fiddling with the with the actual car wiring to um, get the starter and everything working because it's for the body power room. the actual vehicle up because yeah. it's all hacked into bits. So we'll get into that next or tomorrow, as it were. But yeah. apparently, Chuchnade is coming up tomorrow. Who hey, Lee? Yeah. What is he bringing? The seat. Seat, and he said that he's going to stop by your Monday markets for some kebabs. Sweet. Got the loom all wrapped up and done. Uh, we've fed it back through. Now I'm just working on plugging everything back in. Got, still got to terminate fans and just do some shimmingying with the alternator. 
What kind of shimingi in? Uh, just putting a resistor in it so it um, works without a light. Use a resistor to do you. Can't you just done in Kruger and wire an a? <laughs> can't you just done in Kruger and wire a bulb in series? You could wire a bulb, yeah, dangling off the side of the inner guard, or you could just put a resistor in it. That also works. Uh, Woody's pulled the wiring loom out of the car. As you can see, it's a spectacular piece of beauty. Um, Woody was very frightened to have to remove this. I'm not surprised. Um, we also pull all this vent junk out. This is like probably some rare GTR XU1 option that is worth heaps, but. So I'm gonna start pulling this down and figuring out what's going on, getting rid of all the crap that's been added to it over the years. Look at that, god damn it. Sorry, the best one was. Disgraceful. The best one was the earths, where are they? Oh, there's also been rats in here. I found a rat's nest above the cluster. Sweet. But there was rats in here and they've been chewing all those ones. So they're all, they're all, that's all your problem now. That's the... Look at that! Is that the oh. cluster? Yeah. Well, that doesn't matter because it's not having that. Oh, yeah. No it's dash lights at just, all. just going to have a IC7, so it doesn't need any of that junk. Um, and what's Lee been doing all morning? Um, I, saw, I think I saw him checking his OnlyFans. Swipe up, there's a new video. <laughs> <laughs> we could probably hire you out for to other YouTube channels. We probably could. Call us if you want Lee doing the swipe up. <laughs> We've made a pretty big dent in the wiring. All the engine management stuff's all in there ready to go. Um, apart from the transmission control, which I've done most of, but I just got to make a a resistor ladder, look it up if you want to know what that is. Um, but that's a little separate harness anyway, it's all terminated, ready to go to plug in. Um, Woody's then pulled out the main harness, um, like the car's wiring, which was an absolute mess. As you could expect for a car this age, the wiring in these things is pretty simple by any standard, but people mess with them over the years. Some of the stuff was never good enough in the first place. There was one wire that was completely burnt all the way through the loom. I was wondering it didn't melt all the other wires on the way through. So um, this is probably a good example of what I was saying about... Um, What's Lee doing over there? He's polishing something. He's rem rem Hopefully it's <laughs> metal. <laughs> reminiscing the times in the back of the trailer. Yeah. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, this is a good example of what I was saying about um, not being scared of wiring, like. Woody was like freaking out about pulling this out because because it was such a mess but at the end of the day it's a very simple wiring loom and again every wire goes somewhere you can I, I haven't really got a proper wiring diagram for it um, we've sort of found some internet stuff but it's may or may not be correct um, but you can just trace everything the, the fuse box is like five fuses so not <laughs> so much going on there and it's got it written on what they do so I just went through and sort of just tracked things around and, and open it up open take the just open up the wiring so you can see where the wires go and physically follow them is the best way of doing it so it's mostly done now what I've done is I've added the stuff we need to connect to the loom that's just your ignition switch trigger and a um, brake switch um, and the rest of it's mainly like fixing the loom because it's old uh, so headlight wiring was all melted and had bits of relays and stuff put in it and it was just an absolute mess so I've removed all the original headlight stuff it's still got a Still got that switch on the floor, but now all that does is trigger these relays. So this is just a like eBay derived fuse box. I've used them heaps. Um, I think Big Timmy put them on me onto them. They're actually really good. There's there's another type that's got heaps more relays. It looks like this. Heaps more relays and less fuses. So you could 
they're, they're really cheap, like 20 or 30 bucks. Um, good thing. So um, that's all the headlight. Uh, one relay for high and one for low, and then fuses for each side, just because there's heaps of fuse holders. So I'm going to put a link in the description for that off eBay. Do that. Yeah. Recommended. They everything, everything, The quality of them is fine. They work. How much them. was it? They're like twenty or thirty dollars on it. It's really cheap, so uh, good value. Um, the only other stuff I've got to do is, so I suppose, explain this. This this switch used to carry all the power for the headlights, so they that doesn't work very well when switches get old. So now all it does is just switch a very low current voltage to turn these relays on. So. You can revive old stuff like this by adding relays to unload the, the electrical circuit. And I've just replaced all the wires because in the engine bay they'd been chopped up and joined and had scotch locks all over them. There's just crap everywhere as you can see. That's, that's a bit of the wash up of it. That's what you've removed from this loom, eh? Yeah. It's mostly from this. There's a few stragglers from the engine management stuff, but you can tell the age of them. So... Um, the only other relay I've added is just a starter relay, and that's for the same purpose. That's the ignition switch connector there. Um, you just don't know what condition the ignition switch is in, so um, the relay, it just makes it so that doesn't have to carry any load. All it does is click a relay and that turns, operates the starter. So simple stuff for old cars to make them a bit more reliable. Um, here's a bunch of stuff that's got to be hooked up. That's that's power supply straight over to that post that we've put in, and this is stuff going to the inhibitor switch on the gearbox for to operate this relay. So you, obviously it's an auto; you can't have it just starting in any gear. So that's what that stuff's for. Uh, we were hoping to get this finished today, but well, started today, but finished. As in, get the wiring finished and start the car, but we. We were, we were dreaming like this. I've spent about four hours on this, and I kind of didn't really account for that. I, I didn't. I forgot about it. Let's say that I, sh I knew that it had to be fixed, but I just forgot all about it. Lee so, hasn't been much help either. And I just, yeah, well, Lee's been updating his OnlyFans all day, so it's uh, yeah. yeah. Now he's polishing something, which is a bit of a worry. So um, that might be on his OnlyFans. <laughs> so no start today next week i reckon we're going to nail it so stay tuned hope you've learned something about wiring and stop being afraid of it because it's actually very um rewarding once you've worked out how to do it same as anything it's like woody learning how to play a guitar yeah well, I'm once still you shit. work it out it's very it's very <laughs> rewarding I learned what the difference between international roast and blend 43 is, Alan. Yeah? Mm. What? What is it? Mm, the secret. Yeah. You'll find out for yourself. I really want to know, actually. <laughs> we'll put it on cowboy tuned. Yeah. I think he's a blend 43 guy. Mm. That's all we got. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being patient. And we'll see you next week. What are you doing? Um, Melzi said I can increase the vehicle value by doing this one simple trick. Fixes so many problems. Um, that that snake? It, it, it could be. <laughs> Actually, the snake would probably fall asleep in here because it's that cold with the aircon working. Thanks, Lee. What do you reckon, big dog? Why do you want to hang out here all the time now? Because there's bones. It's not because of Woody, that's for sure. Are we, are we wiring? <laughs> Let's go. I'm talking to my dog. Leave me alone.
<laughs> so are we going to start this today or do we start it tomorrow when Lee's not here? Well, I said to Lee earlier, when's he planning on leaving? Because we'll schedule it for about 20 minutes after that. <laughs> or we can send him out to a part shop and then start it up. Then be drinking beer on the way back when he comes back. And tell him, and then put oil on the ground. And a rod. And a rod. <laughs> <laughs> click here, click here, click here. Thanks for watching. <laughs> you made a point to the corners. <laughs> I did. <laughs> He's like over your shoulder making faces.